Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Electric Church Podcast. Thank you to our sponsor, Chameleon Cafe, located off Highway 371 next to Brainerd International Raceway. Chameleon Cafe serves the best breakfast, tacos, and sandwiches in the Brainerd Lakes area. You can find great classics like biscuits and gravy made from scratch. Buttermilk biscuits from scratch. Sausage gravy made with local Patchworks Farms sausage made from scratch. How many places around here make their biscuits and gravy from scratch? Chameleon Cafe does, that's who. They also have great original items like smoked brisket hash. That is Yukon gold potatoes, peppers, onions, smoked brisket, and topped with two over easy eggs. It is a local favorite, and it is a local favorite for a good reason. That's because it is bomb diggity. They also have the Texas brisket sandwich, cranberry, chicken sandwich, even vegan curry tacos. They also have barbecue ribs the first Friday of every month from 5 to 8 p.m. So you should go on Facebook, Google, Instagram, Twitter, find, like them, share them, come on out and eat some of their amazing food. All right. That is our only sponsor for this episode. Uh, On this episode, um, I sat down with my friend Kyle and we discussed uh the mandalorian uh more accurately i gave kyle 13 reasons why i think the mandalorian is better than the star wars movies and uh we just sort of uh discuss it in detail and go back and forth on um different points that i make and points that he makes about the movies and uh yeah that's about it um so it's just us this sort of discussing uh, Mandalorian and Star Wars in general, um, but it's mostly my comparison of the two. Um, is there anything else I wanted to tell you about this in particular? Um, nothing I can think of. We did a, uh, a second conversation, which was more generalized, and I'm just going to keep that in the bank for a while and release it later in February. Um, so this is my conversation with Kyle about the man. Oh, I was going to say spoilers. There's lots of spoilers in this episode. If you have not seen uh, The Mandalorian all the way through, um, you should probably skip this episode uh, I- until you see it, if you have a desire to. Um, and if you don't want to see The Mandalorian, if you're not a Star Wars fan, then you probably have no uh, reason to listen to this episode either because it's the only thing we discuss. Uh, so spoilers ahead. If you haven't seen The Mandalorian, uh, turn this podcast off, go watch all eight episodes of The Mandalorian, and then come right back here and listen. All right, so this is Craig and Kyle discussing The Mandalorian. tuning in to the Oyster Church podcast. Uh, Kyle, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Kyle Amundsen. Uh, I am a, a old guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be 47 in May. Uh, new grandfather. Um, Chicks take me because I rarely wear underwear. But when I do, it's usually something exotic. <laughs> That's from Stripes. And most of the people listening to this probably weren't alive when that movie was made. <laughs> True. True. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm just a dude, man. Just a dude. Just a dude. And we got you on here uh, not only as a friend, but you are also uh, on the Spitballing Podcast. Yes, I am half of the uh, Spitballing Podcast. Uh, um, Matt fucking Taylor uh, is my... Uh, Partner in crime. He's the one that does all the uh, does all the all the heavy lifting, mm-hmm. so to speak. I mean, you know, I'm the one that does the heavy lifting, lifting, <laughs> but he does all the work. <laughs> uh, Literally, yes. <laughs> he uh, he does all the editing and all this. You know, he does all yeah. the technical stuff. He just, you know, I book I book some guests and uh, 
um, and provide the zingers. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm essentially a sidekick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And before we go on, you understand we're recording this conversation and give me permission to post it on YouTube and wherever else I see fit. Absolutely. All right. Do your worst. Uh, and one of the reasons that I wanted to have you on today was to discuss Star Wars and The Mandalorian. Yes, I am an uh, uh, avid fan. Not a rabid fan, but an avid fan. Uh, I... Uh, um, well, like I said, I'm old. I saw the first, uh, I saw Star Wars in the theater. Yeah. Back in my hometown of Pine River when Pine River had a theater before it burnt down. Um, but yeah, so that was seven, how old was I? Three, four? Yeah, that was like 76 or something. 77? 78, I think it came out. Was it 78? I'm not sure. Yeah, shit. I was little. Yeah. I barely remember. For sure. All right, well... I guess I will just get into my list. I have 13 reasons why I think The Mandalorian is better. I'm just going to go through them, and you can kind of... what? Better than, than the Star Wars movies. Than the movies. All of them. All of the movies, movies. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen The Clone Wars, and that's that's definitely on my on my watch list. Yeah, uh, The Clone Wars is great. Um, I, haven't, uh, I haven't seen Rebels yet. I'm actually re-watching Clone Wars right now. Um, and my, 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 my grandson loves it. I mean, he's five months old, so... Yeah. He's not really able to tell me why he loves it, uh, uh, but uh, that's why I didn't bring him on the show. Uh, <laughs> don't care what he has to say at this point. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, when you told me that you liked it better than all the movies, uh, I was I was pretty blown away. Yeah. And I can't wait to hear this list. Well, and, and I think you make a good point that I think it's important for us as adults to remember that these are family movies. They are made for people to enjoy with their kids you know like you said you grew up as a kid watching the original in the theater and now you're sitting there watching it with your grandkid yeah, and he's enjoying yeah, it too absolutely you know so i think some people take this a little bit too seriously and i'm sure i'm gonna get some hate in the comment section on youtube for my my views on this and i just want to say that you know what that's important it's we we all treasure whatever part of star wars that that we treasure because we under we we, we uh, it relates to us for some reason or another. Yeah, but different yeah. stuff might resonate with different viewers. Yeah. I mean, not everybody has to have the same favorites. Exactly. I mean, like, there's some people out there that uh, you know that that, uh, that prefer like the Phantom Menace and uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that comment Which, actually that made me choke on my coffee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah, those people are called jerk offs. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> you can. Eat Email Kyle at no. All right. So uh, starting off on my list, the number one, my my well, not the number one reason, but my list of thirteen. The first thing I have listed is cameos. In the first episode alone, we see Brian Posehn. We have the voice of Nick Nolte, Carl Weathers, who, as a kid of the '80s, we both had to be excited about that for sure, right? I legend Apollo Creed? Yeah. Man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they live. <laughs> Wait, they live? Yeah. With Rowdy Rowdy Piper? Wrong guy. Oh, my God. We have, <laughs> we have some things to discuss on the next podcast. Uh, legendary actor, Herner Warzog. Ah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Right? That's all in the first episode. And yeah. then we go on to Bill Burr. Uh, Mark Boone Jr., who most people know from Sons of Anarchy, Clancy Brown, who most people would recognize for, uh, as the uh, the main guard from Shawshank Redemption, um, who I loved as the Kurgan in Highlander. Okay, yeah, 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 and he also has. I was looking him up, and he has. He's been in a lot of stuff. He has an extensive uh, voice acting resume. Uh, very, very distinctive voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's tons and tons of of kids animation. Um, so, yeah, that was really cool just to dig into all the things that he'd done. I mean, he had probably at least 100 animations under his belt. It was crazy. Uh, Amy Sedaris from Strangers with Candy and multiple other things. Um, and with Amy Sedaris, of course, were Anakin's repair droids from the original or the, the, the prequels. Um, of course, Gina Carano from... Oh, the Gina M Carano. I love her. Yeah. I just... She's been in some pretty bad movies, but she's been in a couple of decent movies. I, yeah, I... I um, I'm, MMA legend. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, uh, however you pronounce his name, Juan Carlo Espino... Espino yeah. <laughs> the guy from Baking, Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah. right. I mean, just come on to be, like, the original Star Wars, I think, made careers. And For sure. And uh, I'm sure, um, you know, the... the 
powerhouse that is uh, that is um, John Favreau <laughs> was able to bring all of these people who are also, I'm sure, fans. You know, um, and I was just, I was excited to see all of those people. You know, and that, like there was there's nobody. You know, who are you excited to see? You know, you're excited to see. Han Solo, and you're excited to see Luke, <laughs> right? And you're excited to see Leia, and you know it's because at this point they're they're legends. You know them as you know because of these careers that they've had, and so like you know the whole series is jam packing it with people who you're excited to see. Yeah, yeah. I uh, <clears throat> I was uh, yeah I, I was I was you know excited the Carl Weathers thing and Nick Nolte. I thought it was funny like. I'm like, well, I'm like, you can't even tell it's Nick Nolte. Well, that's all right because uh, the main character, or like the like the main a- the like yeah. the actor, the main you know the Mandalorian himself never takes his fucking helmet off. Yeah. So like, you could have got anybody to play that part. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and that brings me back to another point I need to break. Go ahead. Oh no, that was it. I, uh, <laughs> I just yeah, I was super excited to see Carl Weathers. I love <laughs> I love to see Gina Carano show up in anything just because. She's attractive, yeah, um, and uh, has a cool career. Uh, has kind of become. Um, I like the way a lot of actors kind of become like uh, nerd royalty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you know, like Lena Headley. Uh, you know, like is like has become like nerd queen mother. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, certain actors uh, and actresses. Uh, you know, like like Gina Carano just shows up in like. Um, you know, she was in. Uh, uh, was it the, was it the second Deadpool movie? I'm not sure. No, maybe it was the first Deadpool. No, the first Deadpool movie. Um, and uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Duh, other than yeah. that, like like post-apocalyptic stuff. You know, and yeah. I mean, just you know, just like like fantasy shit, like sci-fi shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I I dig that. All right. So moving on, this is going to be a point of contention, I'm sure. But oh. <laughs> there's great dialogue and acting on The Mandalorian, which I think is sort of rare within the Star Wars universe. Um, I mean, George Lucas's dialogue is so bad that he actually had actors refuse to say lines, and they changed them. You know, most famously probably uh, Harrison Ford refusing to say, I love you too, and ended up saying, I, I know. know, which has become... I, Super oh, iconic. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, because he, as the actor, knew the character better than he, George Lucas did as the writer. You Which know? is huge. Um, I mean, I George that. Lucas is just not not good at dialogue. You know, I, the sand monologue. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's there's plenty of, of examples. Of, what, what's that kid's name? Hayden Christensen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that poor kid. Oh, no uh, kidding. I don't know if he's as bad an actor as he looked like in those movies, because uh, he looked pretty fucking bad. I, how did he get that um, job? <laughs> or was it the direction, or what was it? Yeah, but I mean, I don't know I, enough about I've movie seen making good acting, to judge. I've seen good acting overcome bad direction before. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> Star Wars I mean, One being a good example. Man. But yeah, or should I, I say episode four? I apologize. <laughs> it's just, it's number one to me. It's Right, know, yeah. It's just Star Wars. Yep. All right, so you don't even have, no, no argument from Kyle on that one, really, huh? You know, no, I thought the acting was decent. And, um, you know, as much as I, like, uh, you know, as much as I'm kind of lukewarm to The Mandalorian overall, um, I was, I liked, and I, I don't know how much of this was actually, like, written in. I don't know if this is brilliant or if this is just like, of course, in this situation, you know how someone would react. Um, but I did know that, uh, like, when he, like, he, like the, the expression that they were able to deliver yeah. without him taking the helmet off. Yes, yes. Was it was pretty cool, pretty impressive, you know. Like, I don't know that uh, if I tried to write something like that, I don't think I could get that point across as well as they seem to. Yeah, that's, um, that's without definitely any facial expression or anything. That's definitely sort of a sub point that I kind of got lost in transferring the notes. Is there wasn't a ton of dialogue, especially from the lead character. It was mostly, uh, it, yeah, um, not even not facial expressions, body, body language. language. Like yeah. he acted his ass off with a helmet on, full body armor. And sparing dialogue. Like, like that's, 
That's amazing. Like, I agree. Yeah. Uh, no, there. No, not everybody there. Like, is a you know is a spectacular actor. For some reason, I thought Carl Weathers. I and mean, this was a writing thing. I thought Carl Weathers like lines and stuff. I thought it was like clunky and weird, and I just didn't uh, like like. It, I don't know if it was his performance. I, I, no. I think it might have been the writing. I because um, Carl Weathers is an actor, man. Yeah, but he always is a little over the top. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, realistically, he it is he delivers lines like they're big lines, even if they're not. And I think that's Fair. what he was doing. You know, I think that's just sort of his his acting style of, um, and you know, probably having to. Uh, you know, I mean, he was on screen with with people who became huge names. Yeah. You know, um, and so I I think um, it was just what he ended up doing is sort of. Oh, short of shattering a little bit, a little bit of overacting and making each 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 line a little, you know, over important. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I thought that the uh, the kid that played Yoda did a nice job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> baby Yoda, uh, child acting, uh, you know, tough, but you know, pulled uh, it off. I'm pretty sure it was a puppet. Um, you know, Kyle he, thinks he's funny. That's by racist. the way, if anybody <laughs> if anybody hasn't listened to the spitballing cop. Co- Podcast. I Kyle, guarantee Kyle thinks he's funny. I'll listen to this and I'll probably laugh at that. <laughs> I'm sure you so, will. I've got sure that going will. for me. All right. My third point is that it, the the series doesn't rely on special effects or CGI. It's a good story. It relies on acting. The CGI and special effects are a side note to the fact that it's you know a, a, a western in space. Um. um yeah. I, you know, I, I did not, I don't know how much I like the acting, or like the, uh, like the writing. Um, oh, really? Yeah, you know, just, I, like, whatever, like, I've, you know, I've enjoyed my share of, you know, Lord knows I've enjoyed my share of westerns, and, like, Kurosawa movies and stuff, but uh, I just, I don't know, I, I was, I, I thought that they leaned too heavily on a lot of those tropes, um, but, uh, uh, you know, and when they did use special effects, uh, they hit home runs. I thought um, that uh, that monster from under the ice uh, in the first episode I thought was great. Mm-hmm. Um, I really loved uh, that Walker uh, that they made look yeah. like a, you know they made it, they made that thing into a monster. Yeah, you know, and that was fucking cool. Yeah, um, so I really liked that. Um, you know, but yeah, like, so the, like when they did, like they did use special effects very sparingly. Um, and when they did, they killed it. Um, so I will definitely give them that, you know, and I, I really like to be fair to that, uh, to be fair to the whole show. Uh, there was just some stuff that like, wasn't like that I didn't really necessarily enjoy. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that I think it was a bad show. Yeah. You know, just not. You know, just well, certainly some episodes were stronger than others. Oh, definitely. Um, even though it was it was interesting um, to have those nods of of them um, landing on Tatooine and the droids and everything, like I felt like that was one of the weakest episodes. And again, ooh, excuse me. You know, it was neat to have those those throwbacks, which is one of my spots. My point six is is throwbacks. Um, the droid uh, bar and the the kids sitting in the same spot as Han Solo, mm-hmm. little throwbacks like that. All there was tons of them on that episode. Um, even though I, I thoroughly enjoyed those throwbacks, um, which is my point six, which I'll now be able to move past. Um, <laughs> I felt that that episode that was so chock full of them was one of their weakest episodes. Um, mm-hmm. So. Uh, Point to you. <laughs> um, so points four and five uh, sort of tie together, um, and this goes to something you were just saying about the Walker. That uh, this show shows the impact of the Empire and the war they had with the Jedi yeah. and the winger effects on that. And then my point five that ties into this is this is the first. Star Wars entity of any kind that I'm aware of that brings us away from that Jedi versus Sith dichotomy, the good versus evil, right? And it brings us into a totally different world of people who are just yeah, kind of citizens. low powered. Just well, when they're just citizens of this universe that are you know 
in the middle of this war between the Empire and the Jedi. And certainly I'm not, I'm not an Empire, <laughs> I'm not an Imperial, uh, you know, defender or anything. Um, but, uh, <laughs> oh, they're out there. Well, There's people that side with the Empire. It's cool that, um, you know, like, <clears throat> like, like what, what you see a little bit in there, and like you see in the real world, um, just because you decentralize, like, the power... Yeah, uh, in the empire, yeah, does Doesn't, not mean that there's not a the lot of bad guys, guys out there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and sometimes they can be more. You know, your the situation can become more more volatile. Yeah, you know, like look at the when Middle you, East. Yeah, you know? exactly. I mean, yep. Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of exactly um, what several of these post um, movies are are showing us. Is you know, yeah, what was it? The First Order. You know, uh, yeah, is that you know just because. But I mean, that's that's all part of the whole Jedi Sith thing, you know. Is is there's always going to be a balance, um, you know. So there's always going to be an ebb and flow, you and, know. And uh, you know, and that's you know, that, that that is kind of refreshing. Um, that it's you know, like in the grand scheme of things, nothing earth shattering has happened in that show so far. Who is the you know who is the uh, like the the potentially like biggest character on the whole show? Baby Yoda. You yeah, know? Um, and, and oh, I can't wait until they name him because I'm sick of calling him Baby Yoda. I don't know I, what the, hell the name of that species. I is. much prefer the child, the child over Baby Yoda. But yes, yeah, that little green motherfucker. Yeah, right. All right. So moving on, um, again, sort of tying into what we were just talking about. This uh, show brings us into the Mandalorian Creed and away from the Seth the Sith Jedi, right? So a few points on the Mandalorian creed that I've noticed. I think they arguably have higher morals than the Jedi. They're warriors and child protectors. Um, The Jedi seem perfectly okay with slavery. (laughs) Anakin and his mother, entire planets, droids are obviously slaves. I mean, CPO calls everybody master. Yeah, and I mean, because I don't know, and I mean, this is just something that I don't know about the universe, uh, but droids sure do seem sentient. Yes. Um, well, so, there's sentient droids, and there's and there's definitely, like, non-sentient droids, yeah. too. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, but yeah, CP3O, you know, definitely has fear. And he you know, calls his people friends, you know, but at the same time, he still calls everybody master because mm-hmm. he is subservient to all humans, you know? So uh, I, I find that, like, you know, I, how, how high of morals do the Jedi really have if they're perfectly okay with slavery, not only of droids, of machines that are sentient, but actual, not humans, but whatever creatures. Uh, so... Yeah, something to think about, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and wish, why and, don't they stop exploiting men and the, the <laughs> and, and, Yeah, and the Jedi um, exploit children. They bring children into the Jedi Order at you know at a very young age. Um, but uh, the lead <laughs> character specifically said that he was brought that when he was eight of age, he was brought into the Mandalorian Creed. So they didn't even teach him the religion until he was of a certain age didn't give him any warrior training until he was in the creed, you know? So I thought that was interesting that even though, you know, like I said, I think it's just sort of higher moral sort of thing where the Mandalorians not only take the foundlings and take care of them and protect them, they don't force their religion or their warrior religion on them, whereas Jedi seem to be doing that. It doesn't seem like if you're a kid... And, you know, you're with the Jedi. You're a Jedi. You don't have a choice. You're being trained. But are there Mandalorians that aren't warriors, you know? I don't know. I mean, I don't know that much about the Creed. We'll find out as Um, the story goes on, I suppose. Well, there's, you know, and and there's different, uh, you know, like different clans and stuff like that, obviously. Absolutely. Um, And some of them, you know, like like throughout their history and stuff, sometimes they're the bad guys, sometimes they're the good guys. Yeah. You know, sometimes they work with, you know, work for the Empire, sometimes against. Yep. Um, Apparently, like the ones that we saw in The Mandalorian, obviously were not friendly to the Empire. Right. Um, And uh, well, the Empire had 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 destroyed most of them and stole all their best cut, but best steel. Yeah. Um, 
And yeah, that brings me to, to just sort of a side point that I'd written down about. I've seen some people like, you know, complaining about that this whole, you know, the fact that they don't take off their helmet, but yet apparently they do in in the Clone Wars. Yeah. And the Warriors are taking off all of their helmets all the time. But like you were saying, there's like separate sects of religion here on Earth. I yeah. mean, you know what I mean? So I don't see a problem with like this is a universe religion, a universal religion. I still haven't seen <laughs> As in the whole make, universe. I, I wanted, to, I wanted so. so bad to like make like a really awkward Mandalorian making love like video to show like how weird and awkward, you know, like gonk, gonk. Yeah, gonk, yeah, yeah. You know, and I haven't seen anything like that. You know, I'm like, that's potential for a skit or something on a right. show, whatever. Nothing. But yeah, I think about the diversity in Christianity in America. Where we have the Mormons, who are the nicest damn people in the world, who, who, like, don't even well, might kill who, you if you're traveling west. Well, no, 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 no. Mexicans killed, killed the Mormons. Is that what you're thinking about? No, no. I was thinking of that wagon train that got butchered by Mormons, uh, um, and then they, they tried to blame it on the Indians. I have no idea. But they kept a bunch this of the kids, is, and then the kids kind of... Obviously split. a long time ago, though. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about, like, right now. Oh. But, you, know, <laughs> you know, Mormons are the nicest people in the world who, like... Like, uh, I, I, there was something... Like, remember Book of Mormon came out? And, like, um, they took out, like, a full-page ad, um, like, in the pamphlet or in, in the booklet... It was like it was like if you enjoyed this uh, this play, you, you could find out more about us at, at our website. Like that's how damn nice they are. They put an ad on a play bill like that makes fun that of them. That was lampooning that was them. them yeah. yeah, like um, and then you have the Westboro Baptist Church. Now both the of these opposite. people, <laughs> both of these people <laughs> consider themselves Christian and are vastly, vastly different, different in temperament. So I see no problem with Mandalorians, you know, being different on different planets. Absolutely. And having, you know, all right, we are moving right along. Oh, that uh, uh, I, I imagine anyone that's like still oh. listening mm-hmm. knows <laughs> enough about Mandalorians to know not a race. Yeah, a culture, a creed, right? Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, oh, I did have one more point um, about how uh, um, he, the Mandalorian, the main character, he picked his creed of Mandalorian over his loyalty to the guild. Um, you know, and again, I think this speaks to the morals of Mandalorians, um, as the Empire stole their Beskar. He was simply reclaiming the Beskar. And then taking the foundling according to their creed, because his loyalty to his creed was greater than his loyalty to the guild. See, the thing that messed me up about that episode was, and I think he needs to get a lawyer, uh, (laughs) because he fulfilled his contractual obligation. If there is one wonderful part about Star Wars... It is that there is no lawyers. <laughs> I have seen no lawyers in the Star Wars universe. All fight, all, all, all things are settled via via violence. <laughs> right. I, it's, it's a true ba- trial by combat universe. I'm pretty sure half the Sith are lawyers. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but Maybe that's it. See, I think, but it, with the uh, you know when he delivered uh, the child. I believe that he fulfilled his contractual obligation. Absolutely. Now, anything after that is just him doing his it's thing. It's just him doing so his I thing. So I don't know what the fuck the guild's problem is, you know, like, I, like whatever, like, going, you know. Like well, going because to... it, it, it should technically be forgotten. Yeah. And obviously he would have to remember it to go back and take the child. So he's breaking creed code. Or not creed code, but guild code. But like I said, mm-hmm. he, he felt, you know, like a moral obligation you know, his creed was had gave him morals that were greater than the founding of it. You know, even though he's a bounty hunter who does very questionable things, he still has a quote unquote religion that give him a foundation of morals. Well, I also had uh, a friend ask me. Uh, her and her husband were watching the were watching that episode, uh, and there were and she was like. She was like, no, we don't agree. Uh, like, wh- why don't, uh, why, did, why did they come and help him? Uh, you know, is it because he was a Mandalorian? And, and, I, and I told her, I'm like, I think that they helped him. Uh, like, the rest of the Mandalorians came to his aid. You know, like, yeah, they didn't love that guy. 
Um, but uh, I think they came to his aid because one, they don't like the empire. Two, they're a warrior culture, and if there's a fight going on, they're mm-hmm. not likely to sit it out. Um, you know, like in in three, I don't forgot what three was, but <laughs> um, uh, you know, but, but probably a code thing. Like, mm-hmm. like, are we gonna let our, you know, are we gonna let gonna let another Mandalorian get fucking, you know, jacked like that? You know, he's getting shit no. stopped. He's kicking no. ass, but like, he's, there's so many of them. Well, and and, they, and again, this speaks to their morals, where I think they knew he was going to get the child, and foundlings are the entire basis of their religion, yeah, yeah. you know? So I think it speaks to, yeah, not only their loyalty, yeah. but their morals. And he, you know, and, and he was, you know, him, him like tithing to the, you know, their their foundation or whatever, uh, like in the name of the foundlings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that they established that, which was cool, mm-hmm. um, you know, like for the foundlings, for the foundlings. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, That that's clearly... Um, I mean, that that was setting up the whole, you know, I thought that we were actually going to end up with, like, a, a little, like, a helmet or something for Baby Yoda at the end of the series. <laughs> with his ears poking out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, which I still think we'll, we'll eventually get there. But, you know, that was definitely foreshadowing, you know, the foundlings. Like, that's what the whole series is about. Yeah, it's Baby Yoda, really. Baby Yoda. I still don't like that. The child. Uh, the no, child. I know. I'm going to get a lot more hits with the tag Baby Yoda, though. <laughs> uh, fair enough. <laughs> All right. So point eight, The Mandalorian, why it's better than the Star Wars movies. It shows the rareness and that uh, of, of not only the rareness of Yoda's species, but also that they are naturally force sensitive. Yeah, we've seen three and three are force sensitive. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, with his quote-unquote young age, or should I say uh, slow growth, um, you know, I mean, he can't even talk, but he's using the Force. Uh, So not only are they naturally sensitive to it, but even have an ability to uh, use it at high abilities at a very young, quote-unquote, young age. Force healing. That's number nine right there, (laughs) Force healing. We got to see Force healing, which is like... What? <laughs> I thought this was... Um, well, I guess necromancy specifically is a Sith power. So I think this is them making that separation of um, Jedi heal, Seth can, Sith can raise the dead, and you know, and then we're working into that amazing gray Jedi territory, right? Which I still think we're going to end up seeing here. Um sometime after the rise of Skywalker. I think that was teasing it. Yeah. And I think they should have gone there. But I think that uh, I would love to see more of that. Um, mm-hmm. I would love to, uh, to, to see them, uh, you know, to come out in the public and uh, make themselves known. Yeah. Um, I hope to someday see uh, Grey Park Broadbreads. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, like I said, he thinks he's funny. (laughs) All right, and that's a great time for point 10. The Mandalorian makes fun of itself, makes fun of Star Wars in general. They've got the great uh, Gongan joke, right? Oh, is that why you don't take off your helmet? He said, nobody want to see your face. (laughs) Right? Like, come on, that was amazing. (laughs) Bill Burr with his, uh, I wasn't a stormtrooper smartass line. Um... The stormtrooper is missing the can on the ground. Come on. Yeah, like, this yeah. show was, okay, so point 11, funny, exciting, and captivating. And I would argue that I don't think any of the Star Wars movies are all three of those things. They're exciting. Mm. They're captivating. They're funny. They're exciting. Like, they're never, they never capture all three. I don't know. I think the very first one. You think the first one? Like, what yeah. was it? What was a joke? Uh, <laughs> are, you, are you kidding me? Han Solo, like uh, when he's when he's uh, talking to the, uh, the stormtroopers and stuff, and he's he's like, I, we're we're fine. How are you? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my God! Okay, yep, uh, yep, you know, yep. Han Solo was pretty funny. Yeah, you got me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that was that was a good one. And and he's got some good lines with with Chewy. Yeah. Where you know just because there's you have. I, I, that whole I, relationship was really well done. Uh, well, I, I, Harrison 
oh, he did this amazing, like, classic vaudeville thing, right? Um, but the jerk is speaking in a language that only he understands. Yep. Uh, like, and, and how great, he, like, I'm in charge here. Yeah. You know, like, you're, like, like, you're, you're, you're like, you're the, uh, you're my sidekick. No. And then, like, so much of the time you feel like Chewie is actually smarter. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chewie knows this. <laughs> and, I mean, that's a fuck, like, like, and that's well done. And that's another, like, uh, like a great, another, another great piece of acting, acting. Dude's in a great big furry suit. Yeah. You know, it doesn't even speak English. <laughs> yeah. Like, how do we know what Chewie's thinking and say what's he, what he's saying? You know, like all that stuff. Like it's pretty damn good. You yeah. Know? Yeah. 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 Okay, you got me. The okay, you're right. The, well, I would I would narrow that down to I'd say Harrison Ford is sure. funny yeah. in the first Star Wars, but still, yeah. Granted, all right. Point but I mean, you. in the last, I mean, okay, that was decades ago. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah, and what was the last time there was a joke? And like, I mean, it was you know the the high ground jokes are funny, the high ground memes are funny. Well, you know, and again, <laughs> bad Jedi business. Back to your drinks. <laughs> it's funny, but it's not meant to be. <laughs> that was not. I don't think George had a great like. Oh, what a zinger this will be. Yeah, no, right. no, no. Like he wrote that with all seriousness, yeah, and the Lucas actor delivered limited. it with all seriousness too. <laughs> oh man. All right. Uh, point number twelve: character growth. At the beginning, we see through the whole series, we see Mandalorian is is droidophobic. <laughs> I yeah. guess, right? True. Um, and in the last episode, he is sad when IG-11 self-destructs to save the child. So we see an amazing amount of personal growth within this character. Um, and, I mean, yeah, come on. And, you know, just the fact that, I mean, like, he, he undergoes that little transformation and decides he's going to save the child and, like, fight for the child and yeah. stuff. Um, you know, it's it, that, uh, yeah, that's a good call. Yeah, yeah. All right, so my, my 13th point is simple enough. And I, Mandalorian is better because of baby Yoda, because the child, that in alone, that little, that broth sipping little bastard, he won everybody's hearts. He is a meme god. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, like, I posted a meme the other day. Uh, and I was like, well, what if everybody, what if not everyone knows who this is? Everyone, <laughs> everyone knows, knows who, who, this, who is. this is. If you have a computer, like, unless you're living under a fucking rock, you know, and have been for your, like the last year, you know who the hell that is. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm still hung up on how he poops. <laughs> What about going to the bathroom? Does he have a diaper on? You know, like, why does he get to, like, he's left for a long period of time. Is it, like, force-related? Do, like, the medical, are metachlorians actually poop particles or something? Like, do I you, don't know. Do you know that sharks don't urinate? They leach their uric acid out through their muscles. Hmm. Th like, through sweat, basically, hmm. sort of. Um... And, I mean, we saw on that first episode, you know, hey, uh, whatever that species was, I need to go. Uh, I need to use the vac, t <laughs> the vac tube. And, and that was, the, uh, that was another big-name actor. You know, Who I was that? I, I, I don't know. But, you like know. Like Horatio Sands or something? Um, you know, yeah, I mean, um, we have no idea the biology of these species. Yeah. Who's to say he has any sort of anus or sexual organs? I mean, there's, there's literally, like, this weird species of worm that lives at the, at the bottom of the sea um, that, like, it just slithers along and then it gets this huge mouth to, like, eat other things, like, just whoosh, explodes over them, basically, like, becomes way bigger than it, like, thing-like, you know? Um, and when it comes across and when it, it comes onto one of its own species, you know, as soon as it goes to eat it, it can taste it and know that it's its own species. And then it immediately goes into reproduction mode. And it has both eggs and sperm. Okay? And they exchange, they these little probes come out and they exchange eggs and sperm. There so it's sexual reproduction, but there's the, they're all hermaphroditic basically. Hmm. 
but not even hermaphroditic because hermaphroditic would, would is a is a genetic mutation where you're you're sterile. Yeah. Little um, dick, little so yeah, it's very strange. Uh, <laughs> so you know, and I mean that's here on Earth. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, and like I say, that's, that's two things that live in the ocean, sharks. And so, I mean, this Yoda species could be some weird thing like that where literally, like, they eat once in a great while like a reptile. And they exude their waste through their skin. You should wa- they should wash his robe then. And they don't have, like, sex sex. They have exchange of DNA in this strange, you know, Way that it's a sexual reproduction, but it's a it's a sex that we don't have a comprehension of as human beings. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> that sounds like a porn up challenge. <laughs> well, we know it has a mouth. <laughs> oh, this just took a dark turn. And, you know, this was child friendly until the very end, Kyle. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. A few notes to finish up here. Um, I'm going to call this predictions and or resume for Disney+. Plus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think some things that should happen on The Mandalorian, or at least would happen if I was writing the series, hint, hint, John Favreau. <laughs> I think at some point the series should jump ahead at like 100 years or so to our lead character is now dead, and the child is the Mandalorian. He's an adult. A force-wielding? A force-wielding Mandalorian. Mandalorian. And then, thank you for bringing it up, we get to have flashbacks of him in training and using the force and the Mandalorian getting upset and telling him that is not the way. Come on. Come on. (laughs) <laughs> and him struggling with this through his training that he's not supposed to use the force according to his creed, but it's just like part of his species. It's just, you know what I mean? It's like telling a weightlifter not to lift weights, you know? <laughs> like it just it just comes naturally. He needs to use the force and him struggling with that and somehow coming to terms with it. Um, like I said, all via flashback. Right? Because now he's the lead character. Um, And uh, let's see. Oh, and then, of course, uh, you know, you can jump ahead and do a season or two like that and then jump backwards to this lead character again and the child as a child and them forming a new coven and finding more findings and training. And you can literally have, like... They should be able to do two different, basically two different series within the same series and then release them at different points of the year. Right? Maybe they could make fucking full hour episodes instead of 20 minute episodes. <laughs> hey, that one was like 40 some minutes. Oh, man. Well, that's everything I got on why The Mandalorian is better than the Star Wars movies. I, uh, um, I don't know. I, I seldom think about like what's actually better. I mostly think about what I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, um, I have like my ranking is Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars, and some and I and I waffle on this sometimes. Empire, Star Wars, um, Rogue One. And oh, you should then, have seen the face I just made. <laughs> and then Return of the Jedi. I loved Rogue One. Really? Oh, I thought it was so good. I did not care for it at all. Oh, man. I couldn't name a single character from Rogue One. Um, and I think I told you this before. Like, my, my, like I, know, I know what the end of the story is. They get the plans for the yeah. Death Star. And, so, die, and, everybody and, dies. and everybody dies. So I know the story. So you need to have great acting, great dialogue, a compelling story, so that at the end of this movie, I'm emotional. I'm now sad that these characters are dead, even though I knew they were going to die. I couldn't tell you I a got single character from that movie. Really? I couldn't tell you a single character. Hmm. No. No, I, uh, I, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, you know, and of course, Star Wars and Empire. And, of course, the fourth is probably... 
Return of the Jedi. But, you know. I mean, and, and you know, I one of my, I would say probably in my top five. Um, I, well, I, I think Empire is probably my favorite. Um, Return, New Hope. Um, I would say my probably my fourth favorite um, would be uh, Revenge of the Sith. Really, I really, really enjoyed. You know what? I can name one character from Rogue One, Darth Vader. Man, when he was <laughs> fucking up those, dude, that was that the was best. Dope. That was the best goddamn five minutes of the. That was the only good five minutes of the whole movie. Like that was it, man. He, like they played his music, and he was like just oh, laying like, waste, jacked, man, jacking like, up those rebels. Yeah, because oh, we've never really part. seen him get down that before, the, you know. Yeah. No, you I don't. mean we've seen him just in, be intimidating and like mm -hmm. maybe choking, maybe force choking somebody, um, but no, him like just like in there just kicking ass, you know, loose. being a warrior, yeah, Oof. yeah, scary, yes, <laughs> like that was that was the best part of that whole movie, <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, I I, I really liked uh, was it Revenge of the Sith or Rise of the Sith where he becomes uh, Episode Three. Where he transform into into Darth Vader, uh, you know it starts off slow. It's longer than it needs to be, but once he is knighted, Darth Vader, and he goes in, into the temple, and that ugh, come on him and 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 Obi Wan and Mustafar. Uh, and Palpatine finding him, like that whole like yeah, there's that one horrible no scream, you know. But I like, tried to rewatch those, God, but I, I couldn't. Uh, I, I didn't. I couldn't get past Jar Jar, you know. And he's not even the worst part. Uh, yeah. Well, it, and and uh, yeah. I mean, I think I think the uh, there might be some um, legitimacy to the fan theory that he is the ultimate Sith Lord, and that Palpatine is his. I can see that. Um, I mean, he is uh, he is ultimately a protagonist. You, nobody likes him, you know. Um, he he ends up either goofing up or helping Palpatine unintentionally, or perhaps it seems unintentional. But you know, he's always next to Palpatine's side. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I you know I I and. I, I maybe George just left it loose enough so that it was there if it needed to be there, you know. I mean, maybe we haven't seen like Jesus. We just we just saw Palpatine come back, um, yeah. And we didn't even get into that. Uh, the that the child. I remember a quill at one point uh, said that the child doesn't appear to be a clone, but that uh, Clara Dune seems like she could be hmm. so yeah they introduced clone technology in the show not only in that last movie they brought us um so it's tying into the same universe that is also and giving us glimpses of the same thing that are you know basically happening around the same time um you know we sort of i can't remember which we saw first i think we the first time we saw four ceiling would was on the mandalorian and then it was in um Rise of Skywalker. I haven't even seen that yet. You haven't seen Rise of Skywalker mm -hmm. yet. I haven't been to a movie in months. Kyle, I think you Which just I me. think you just lost your rod uh, nerd creed here. <laughs> Holy crap! Wow, you haven't seen Rise of Skywalker yet. Mm -mm. Okay, no. well that's okay. Prepare to be disappointed. Uh, you know, uh, those I, I well. I, with, with you know, aside from like I said, I really enjoyed Rogue One, but that was the only time I've really enjoyed a Star Wars movie since you know since my childhood. Yeah, um, I go and see them, you know, just to like keep up with the culture and everything. But uh, you know, I, I, and I don't like to just be one of those people that bitches that, you know, oh they're ruining it, like. It's a kid show. It's a family show. Like, yeah. get over it. You can love the original three Star Wars without shitting all over every new Star Wars thing that came out. But yeah. I'm also obviously like I I examine why I like, you know, like I obviously did. Just I examine why I like it. You know, sometimes sure. it's not just a baseline. Ooh, I like it. And it's I mean, not I like, like movies. I mean, like you know, bad they might be, but. It's not like 
Indiana Jones and the Crystal oh, Skull or whatever. Yeah. You know, like, it's yep. not just a savage butt fucking of the yeah. whole. Like, I, like, <laughs> right. You know, I mean, I have to agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. Anybody that complains about the new Star Wars yeah. definitely think about needs Chris. to watch the last to watch the, 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 the Star in, in Indiana Jones. Movies. Absolutely. That is a <gasps> very valid point. Lordy, that was horrible. Oh my God. That, I mean, I. I, I, a small piece of me died. Right. Yeah, for that sure. Shit like, is brutal. Yeah, I mean, it. They ended it so perfectly with Last Crusade. It was yeah. so like they even Let it be they even point. rode off into the sunset, father and son and friend riding off into the sunset together. The story's over. Let it. Let it be over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that was a savage butt fucking indeed. So Ugh. Park got it right for sure. Yeah, man. They did really well with that. Yeah. Yes, they did. <laughs> as yes, they you did. know, but, as they do with a lot but, of stuff. But just to give you my little critique without any spoilers, um a big part of the movie felt like um a D and D object quest by uh, a first-time dungeon master. Um, the whole point of the object quest in and of itself, which took up a lot of film time, ended up being a huh moment. You'll totally, like, <sighs> when, yeah, when you see it, when you see them, you know, with the object and, and uh, you know, that moment of, uh, it's supposed to be aha, and you, I'm sure, there, and I'm sure there's some people who are like, oh, that's awesome. But I think the majority of the audience is, instead of going, aha, going, huh? Really? What? <laughs> Turning aha into, uh, uh -huh. Uh, yeah. Uh. Yeah. Um, you know, there's definitely some decent parts. I like, I feel like, the end of the resolution of Ray and Kylo Ren, like I enjoyed that. It got a little weird, but I enjoyed that interplay. Um, Palpatine returning didn't bother me. I know that was a craw on a lot of people's sides, um, but I kind of liked the way they did it um, in that he didn't get a lot of screen time, but offered the classic, you know, villain explanation of, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, explaining his his master plan. Um, so I felt like that was sort of satisfying. But, yeah, there was probably at least 40 minutes of screen time that felt like an object quest that was left to, you know, instead of it being a big reveal, it was a big fucking letdown. <laughs> it was, it made me question, like, why, why, why was that even in there? How did nobody... No, not a single uh, director, producer, actor. Nobody said this doesn't fucking make any sense. Why are we doing this? Doesn't make any. Well, why would they start sense. now? You know. <laughs> Good point. I mean, one of one of my favorite and and you know like one of my favorite points of how weird and ridiculous and how you just have to set things aside. Why. There's there's absolutely no reason to have a trash compactor on a Death Star. You're either going to incinerate it or you're going to launch it into space anyways. There's no reason for it, it to be there. It might have been part of their recycling initiative. <laughs> you know, but it just it just uh, it goes to show this weird, uh, oh. you know, like how how we're we're writing science fiction from an earthly point of view. Why? Here's my big question. Why the hell would you... What, what, what the fuck is with man, or midichlorians? I, I, Couldn't just leave it this mystical force? Yeah. Couldn't, I, like, had to explain it in... Not, like, and, and, you know, if you're going to explain it, then okay. But you've got to come up with the dumbest, most ridiculous goddamn explanation that you could possibly think of. Just leave it alone. Yeah. Just don't do it. Yeah, I Don't agree. give Wolverine a background story. Don't... Come up with medical. Don't do. Don't do metachlorians. Don't give Wolverine Some a shit. background story. Hell yeah! Are you leave kidding me? Leave bits and pieces, breadcrumbs. Oh my god! Don't make him a howlet. Like that whole story. <sighs> that 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 story arc sucked. Oh well. Um, okay. Okay. The story of his childhood. <clears throat> agreed. 
that could have been left alone. I have no like Weapon X. Oh, Weapon, Weapon X, that's great. Th- yeah, th- that should have been that should have been his entire origin story. Absolutely, that, it, he should have started you know, at Weapon then, X. It should have been like let, I know, have no memory of anything. Sprinkle before shit in there, like let us nothing. know, like okay, yeah, you were yeah. in World War II, like you fought in World War II. Weird, you know, like yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, like you were maybe you, know, you fought in the Civil War, like how, well, like we got a clue, like that looks like this looks like you in that picture, like that's weird. Yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. have to explain everything. That would have been way more fun. I great. agree. I agree. Um, and Metaclorians, same damn thing. Yeah. Leave it yeah. alone. They're space you know? wizards. That's yeah. good enough, man. It was cool like, then. We they believe in some shit when they people believe in magic on Earth for fuck's sake. Yeah. We're sure as fuck gonna believe in magic in space. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, should we take a little break? Yeah. Sure. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in, everybody. I think I'm gonna split the next episode into a different podcast. Uh, so this will be the 13 reasons why Mandalorian is better than Star Wars. Thank you for tuning in again. I'll I'll plug in a commercial at the beginning and end. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Electric Church Podcast. Thank you to our sponsor, Chameleon Cafe. You can find them off Highway 371 next to Brainerd International Raceway in Brainerd, Minnesota. They have the best breakfast, lunch, and tacos. Excuse me. Best breakfast, tacos, and sandwiches in the Brainerd Lakes area so go ahead and check them out you can find them on facebook instagram twitter and of course google has plenty of information for us uh if you like this podcast please like and share and if you debate with any of our points go ahead and continue the conversation down in the comments section thank you again and we'll see you next time